I have nine o'clock. That okay. clock's a little slow. Good morning, everyone. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the August 29th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. Um, my name is Shelley Bueller, and I have the pleasure of serving as chair of the commission alongside Commissioner Kevin Cook and Commissioner Bob Archer. Good morning. Good morning. Madam Clerk, we do have um, a request to pull item um, one under unfinished business, and so if there are no uh, objections, that item is pulled. And then also um, did have a request from um, Betty Greiner to uh, pull item H1 uh, for the uh, presentation of the audit because I understand that Cochran Head and Vic are wanting to come on September 9th. Is yes. that correct? And make, a and make a presentation at that time. So if there are no objections, those two items uh, will be pulled. Objection. Okay. Good. First item, okay. please. Proclamations, presentations, number one. <coughs> Presentation of the large LEPC award to the Shawnee County Local Emergency Planning Committee. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. <coughs> I'm Carl McNorton, I'm a fire chief, Soldier Township Fire Department, just north of town up here. I also happen to be the chairman of the Shawnee County LEPC. And I've got a brochure here I'll give to you about what an LAPC is, but just real quickly, uh, before I give you guys our award, <coughs> the LAPC was started under the uh, federal legislation due to a incident occurred in India in Bhopal where there was a large chemical release and killed thousands of people. <coughs> we had a similar incident happen in the United States, but it fortunately only killed a few uh, and several injuries, right almost immediately after that one. <coughs> At that time in 1986, the federal ed federates required or created the Emergency Planning Community Right to Know Act, as well as the uh, emergency or the hazardous chemical reporting requirements and uh, Superfund Amendments and Reauthorization Act. From that is where they created the LAPCs, as well as a state level uh, emergency response commission. Uh, we have our local LAPC, and our job is basically to understand what hazards are in the community, uh, develop emergency plans for accidental release and disasters, as well as natural disasters, and look for ways to prevent or mitigate future incidents from occurring. <coughs> the membership of an LAPC is made up of uh, folks like myself from the emergency services, uh, law enforcement, uh, the sheriff's department's part of this, emergency management, fire departments, both rural as well as city fire, Topeka PD, we have uh, Shawnee County Health, Public Works, uh, members of the hospitals, as well as from industry that are affected by the re reporting requirements under the APRA. <coughs> and over the last six years, we've had a lot of, uh, the LAPC was almost non-existent about six years ago. And Commissioner Bueller's been an active participant in the LAPC. In the last two years, we've really taken a large step forward and at that point, we were literally getting recognized by the state as well as by the uh, Region 7 uh, Emergency Response and Planning about what we've done and accomplished over the last two, last two years. And this is our plaque for, for this achievement. <coughs> Commissioner Bueller, I'd like to present this to the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got a lot of good partners in this, a lot of good activity, and uh, without the help of the Shawnee County Commission support as well as the emergency management, uh, we wouldn't be able to get done what we're doing. We're really proud of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you left too soon sorry um, I, I was just gonna say that uh, the county really appreciates everyone who serves on the LEPC I know we have 
uh, members from the 190th who serve on that and from our medical community, from the hospitals. Um, it's a pretty well-rounded uh, committee and uh, really keeping watch and, and uh, appreciate all your, your efforts. And, and Thank you. And we're proud to be able to do this for you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I would echo thanks for all the work that you put into this and your group and the award. It's really to commend your mm -hmm. efforts. Mm -hmm. Also to uh, thank Commissioner Bueller for her work. I know that you've worked very <laughs> diligently on this and developing it from really a very small project to a very recognizable project. And so I want to thank you for your service as well. Thank you very much. Thank right. you. Thanks for being here this morning as well. Carl, is this f for us to hang yes. here? Okay, good deal. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next item. Unfinished business number one has been polled. Item three, consent agenda. <coughs> Are there questions on the consent agenda? If not, is there a motion? Motion to approve. So, motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Item four, new business. A County Clerk, number one, consider all voucher payments. Uh, Madam Chair, this, this morning there are one set of vouchers uh, dated August 28, 2013, in the amount of $542,567.08. And I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers as presented. Second. A motion to approve the vouchers is presented by Commissioner Archer and a second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Number two, consider correction orders. We'll move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Okay. Item B, Bond Council. Number one. Public hearing and consider approval of resolution numbers 2013-115 through 2013-118, assessing the costs of street and sewer improvements for the Timber Ridge subdivision as follows. Main Sewer District number 92, Lateral, lateral Sewer District number 1, $310,307.40. Main Sewer District number 92, Lateral Sewer District number 2, $101,172, Street Benefit District, Phase 1, $261,953, and Street Benefit, Street Benefit District, Phase 2, $255,885.12. Thank you. <laughs> you're good, you're good. good. And at this, <laughs> at this time, we'll open the public hearing. Bob? Uh, good morning, Bob Perry. Uh, this, uh, uh, public hearing is necessary prior to the uh, levying these special assessments. All four benefit districts were created uh, pursuant to petition filed by 100% uh, of the owners of the lots and blocks affected at the time, which were the developers. Since then, they've, lo they've sold several lots, built several homes. Uh, the streets and the sewers are complete, and the statute requires that we permanently ass we assess them and permanently finance them. Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the commission? No. Or any comments from those in the audience? Okay. I'll make a motion. We close the public hearing and approve the resolution. Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Archer and a second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Number two, consider approval of resolution number 2013-119 continuing the Sedgwick County and Shawnee County issuance of single family mortgage revenue bonds. Bob Perry still. Uh, this <laughs> resolution authorizes the issuance of single family mortgage revenue bonds and an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $300 million over a series of issues. Uh, basically this program is a program for low and moderate income housing that has been uh, sponsored by Sedgwick County and Shawnee County for the last 23 plus years from my memory. Uh, it's generated uh, a lot of loans for a lot of people prior to we had the market crash in 2008. The underwriters are uh, of the opinion that the market's changed enough that uh, we can implement this program and continue to make them low and moderate income housing loans. This is not a debt or an obligation of the county by statute. The bondholders are paid solely and only from the trust estate pledge. 
which is basically the revenue stream from borrowers making home loans, prepayment on loans, as well as all of them are required to provide proof of insurance, uh, proof of income in purchase mortgage insurance. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Are there questions? Okay. Motion to approve the resolution. So motion to approve the resolution second. by Commissioner Cook and second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank Thanks. you all. Item C, Public Works Solid Waste Number One, consider approval of change order number one, final, to contract C103-2013 with Midwest Construction Company, Inc., reflecting final as bid versus as construction quantities, resulting in a price decrease of $7,291 for the Southeast 89th Street Bridge over Lynn Creek Project. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Black with Public Works and Solid Waste. Uh, this is a public works item as mentioned uh, in the memo we over the past several months we've been having the bridge on southeast 89th street over lynn creek being reconstructed that product is now complete we have run a tabulation of the final quantities of what was actually built versus what was bid and the net result of that is a reduction in the contract price of seven thousand two hundred ninety one dollars and it's our recommendation that this change order be approved if there's any questions, we'd be happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Tom. I'll move approval of the contract. Second. Change order of the contract. There's a uh, motion by Commissioner Bueller, second by Commissioner Cook. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Number two, consider approval of change order number one to contract C-277-2013 with Emerson Construction, Inc., Reflecting actual quantities for item numbers 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, and reflecting the addition of item number 25 for erosion control blanket and liquidated damages resulting in a net decrease of $13,249.75 for the Northeast Meriden Road over Little Muddy Creek Project. By Commissioner Tom Block, again, again, as stated in the memo, this is a little bit of a follow-up to uh, the item we had on the agenda last week in which we increased our uh, engineering consultant's uh, contract by around $5,600 because this contractor went um, a couple weeks over, over the, the contract period. So we assessed liquidated damages. Those liquidated damages are now reflected in this change order to the construction contract. Um, which uh, includes liquidity damages and then also the adjustment of um, final quantities of actual construction versus the quantities that were bid. And again, as stated, the net result of that is a reduction in the construction contract of $13,249.75. And it's our recommendation that this change order be approved. Um, and if there's any questions regarding this, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Tom. Motion to approve the change order. There's a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Number three, consider approval of emergency purchase from Haynes Equipment of an automatic water sampler kit and section line for the Sherwood Wastewater Treatment Plant in an amount of $4,581. Uh, Commissioner Tom Block again. Um, as stated in the author, prior authorization request form um, out at the Sherwood plant, we had an automatic sampler go down, uh, which is a requirement that we have uh, sampling being done on a continuous basis uh, to run the operation of the, the plant. Uh, the operator contacted me. I, I indicated our informed that you know we needed to go ahead and get the equipment as our requirement. So we went ahead and had them uh, authorize the purchase and have it installed. The cost was $4,581. We purchased it from Haynes Equipment. Um, and the, uh, the funding for this would come from the Sherwood Regional Wastewater System Fund, uh, which is which is an enterprise fund or user fee fund, and no tax monies would be incurred uh, for, the, for that purchase. If there's any questions regarding this, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you. Other questions? Motion to approve the emergency purchase. Second. There is a motion by Commissioner Cook and second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. 
Number four, consider approval of a sole source purchase from the GW Van Keppel Company for a hydraulic oil cooler and freight costs in a total amount of $2,371.27. Hi, Commissioners. Tom Block again. Um, as mentioned in this, uh, in the authorization form request, we did have a hydraulic oil cooler go out on one of our pieces of equipment. Um, our staff checked around with some other vendors in, in the area regarding this piece of equipment. They indicated that they do not sell those parts and that, would, that they would have to come from the dealer of which uh, GW Van Keppel is the representative for that uh, dealership or for that manufacturer in the area. So uh, by that we determined it was sole source and that is the, re the request before you is to uh, authorize the purchase <coughs> of the hydraulic, <coughs> excuse me, hydraulic oil, oil cooler from Van Keppel Company in the amount of $2,371.27. And the funding would come out of our um, uh, garage um, equi and equipment fund. If there's any questions regarding this, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Tom. Motion to approve the sole source purchase. Second. There is a motion from Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye, opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank Thanks, Tom. Item D, corrections. Number one, consider approval of a sole source purchase from Securus Technology, Inc. for cordless phones that inmates can use inside their cells at a cost of $10,443 to be paid from the inmate commissary fund. Good morning, Commissioners. Brian Cole, Department of Corrections. Mm -hmm. uh, before you is a request to add an additional secure option to our phone system that we already have in the facility we use currently. We contract with Securus. Uh, in the past, and to solve a problem that we have had at the Department of Corrections, uh, is families have, also have constantly asked us about different ways to increase contact with them. It's either for visitation, uh, added uh, opportunity for phone calls. So we did an aggressive research and thorough look into what options were out there with our um, Securus phone system. Uh, at that time, we looked at uh, ways that were cost effective to the inmates and for the county. Um, we looked at uh, how this could increase morale with the inmates and the families of those who have incarcerated loved ones in the, in the uh, jail, and also that would be a part of our safety and security system and protocols that we already have in place. You know, one of the things that I want to emphasize, and I probably can't emphasize it enough, is these are not cell phones or seen as a luxury item by any means. Uh, these are something that are commonly used in correctional facilities during lockdown service or lockdown periods. Uh, these are cordless phones. They're hooked up to the same system that we have already. That uh, they're recorded phone calls. They have to be checked out. Inmates cannot purchase them. They cannot possess them as in carry them around or have them at long lengths of time. They, these phones are just a system, and I have Major Tim Phelps here if there's some technical questions about it they can answer, but these are phones that are not luxury, that uh, they can be used during a lockdown period. We currently operate under a 12-hour uh, shift schedule where we have longer lockdown periods now than we used to. Uh, we have lockdown periods that start in the early evenings. A lot of the inmates and the families are saying if you restrict the inmates uh, being able to call home after 7 o'clock, we can never talk to our loved ones. Uh, so this is another option. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is, is that having increased uh, uh, contact with family, either by video visitation, which we're looking at, but this is phones, is a very wise behavior management uh, system. Uh, Evidence-based uh, studies have shown, and we did our research, that inmates who have more contact with family and friends on the outside tend to act and behave better in jail. They tend to get out quicker, lower <laughs> recidivism. And um, these are also going to be paid through the image. This was their benefit, so they're going to pay it. This is no cost to the taxpayers of the county. Uh, we also generate revenue from these phones, just like this. So this is just an addition to the uh, current phone system we have. It just gives us another secure option. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Brian. Um, how is how's the time um, and the checkout monitored then? It's all done through the in, or through the officer. Through the officer. Everything done. It will be the same. Uh, currently, right now, when we have phone calls, they have lists in the modules. They sign up for phone calls. The officers will let them say, you know, is Brian Cole ready? Okay, it's your turn on the phone. If they wish to during the lockdown period, they will sign up through the officer, 
and they will get to check out the phone. The officer, when they do their normal rounds during lockdown periods, will get the phones back, which would be 15 minutes to as much as 30 minutes. Okay. But those phones are strictly uh, monitored. Also, this is a security correctional grade type cordless phone. It's encased in a very hard rubber that we uh, secure us as uh, in likeness to that these things are very durable. You can throw them, you can do whatever you want. Um, they're very durable. So inmates can't tamper with them to try to do something else. But the main feature that we liked was that they hooked up to the regular self or the phone um, system that we have. They're just in another edition. It's all recorded, everything. And it, it, they would operate under the same uh, uh, processes. Yes. Uh, Director Cole, can you tell us a little bit about the inmate commissary fund? Where does this fund come from? How does it generate it? The um, inmate commissary fund is generated through fees the inmates pay for their own services or they buy through the commissary. Uh, we have a commissary contractor, Keith, who's one of the largest, if not the largest in the world when it comes to commissary or correctional settings, is we get the inmates when they buy food or commissary items, candy bars, whatever, hygiene items, whatever, that money goes into an account, and a percentage of that money goes into the account that is used for their, uh, them to use stuff. So when you come through the jail and you see stuff like TVs, recreational equipment, the county's not buying those, the inmates are. And that goes, that fund is set aside, is monitored with uh, the finance auditor, and we look at that and we buy stuff just strictly for the benefit of the inmates. But that's money that, that's used, that they pay for, or they buy stuff and we use it for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Motion to approve the expenditure. There is a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. I'll second the motion. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item E, elections. Number one, consider approval of request to fill a voter services director position and any positions that become vacant from filling this position at a rate of $39,021 plus benefits. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, Andrew Howell, Shawnee County Election Commissioner. Just briefly, uh, recently we've had a position that's become vacant in the office. That's our uh, voter services director position. Uh, we need to get that position filled fairly quickly, so just simply a request to fill that. Um, basically, the voter services director is responsible for managing our voter registration processes. Uh, assisting candidates that need that information, various pieces of information, maintaining the Elvis voter database, implementing the uh, National Change of Address <laughs> program, also managing uh, advanced voting booths in the office, and uh, both in the office and by mail, and ensuring that our federal service ballot program is administered according to law. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Howell, when we advertise for this position, if it's approved, is there a priority given? I mean, this might be more of a question for Mr. Thummel than for you, but is this position offered exclusively to current county employees or is it open to everybody? I don't know that we've talked in detail um, about exactly how that's handled. I think that we certainly try to give county employees um, <laughs> a chance to pass. Human Resources. <coughs> By practice, um, we open them to current county employees for seven days. And then if there's uh, not a significant pool, then we uh, go ahead and advertise to the outside. So when we're looking at some of the budget decisions that were made recently, if there are departments that are looking at layoffs or downsizing, this would be an opportunity for employees to look at other opportunities to stay within the county? Perhaps. It might. Uh, Mr. Howell has the opportunity to open it in department first, if he so desires, or to county employees. Uh, either one of those two steps are, are absolutely acceptable with us. Only in very rare occasion do we go strictly to the outside, perhaps like in the cases of RNs where there are uh, registered nurses everywhere elsewhere in the county. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll move approval of the request. Is, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Item F, Health Agency, number one. Consider approval of a request to fill an account clerk two position with total compensation of $33,602.08 a year in the health agency's local health department billing office and any subsequent positions that may become available as a result of filling this position. Good morning, Commissioners Allison Alejos Health Agency. 
Um, this position is um, becoming vacant due to an in intra-department transfer. Uh, we are asking to go ahead and refill it. Uh, this position is responsible for the local health department billing um, activities, uh, things such as updating, pa updating patient accounts, uh, collecting and posting payments on accounts, reconciling uh, things that need to go to collections, things of that nature. Thank you, Allison. Are there questions on this item? I'll make a motion to approve the request. There's a motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. And Allison, Thank you. would you introduce your guest? I would, I would. Um, in the back row, my son John Alejos and his friend Drew John. They're here um, <laughs> from Troop 7. Uh, they're working on a merit badge, the Citizenship and Community. And so we're, I'm very happy that they decided to come here today. Very glad that you could join us and welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Alice. Okay. Item G, Parks and Recreation, number one, consider approval of a request to award bid for the purchase of 14,000 pounds of trout each year for three years from Crystal Lake Fisheries for a total three-year amount of $119,700. <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. I just wanted to remind these two young guys that generally when somebody brings you down to uh, sit through one of these meetings, they immediately buy you breakfast as soon as this all goes <laughs> This item, commissioners, is a uh, uh, is to uh, our request from Parks and Recreation to uh, purchase trout. Uh, uh, if you didn't already know this, Lake Shawnee was the very first lake to uh, uh, begin stocking trout in it. It's been a very popular program for the anglers here uh, in the uh, northeast part of the Kansas. In fact, it was so popular that Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks began copying this program, spread it around all the lakes throughout the uh, state of Kansas. A few years ago, back in about 2005, the uh, uh, Kansas Wildlife and Parks Department, working with the uh, uh, United States Sports Fisheries Association, or Sport Fish Act, used federal funds to help offset the cost to reduce the barriers to fishing. One of the ways that they elected to do that was to uh, help remove some of the local area lakes and, and community lakes and those things who had separate fees. They removed those fees, and by removing those fees, uh, that, that help open up the number of anglers being able to fish in the different uh, uh, lakes, but it also removed from us an, uh, what we used for to purchase the fish. And with that, then they've uh, offered to uh, purchase those fish for us. Uh, at one time, we did uh, use the specifications for their trout. Uh, we tried that once. It was very unpopular at Lake Shawnee, so uh, they, they have graciously accepted us to uh, use our own specifications, which are fewer fish but larger fish. So uh, that's the request in front of you today. Um, uh, any, uh, all of these costs, are, are, uh, there will be no cost to the Shawnee County taxpayers other than the uh, butter and lemon sauce will be on the angler. They'll have to purchase those themselves. <laughs> be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Thanks, John. Are there questions? Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Number two, consider approval of a request to award bid for the replacement of portions of sidewalk at Shunga Glen Park, 2400 Southwest Washburn Avenue, to Ben Schreiner Construction at a cost of $8,400. Uh, commissioners, to, to refresh your memory, this is something that was before you earlier this year. We, I, we came back to you with three options to re repair in this uh, section of sidewalk. Uh, one of the options that was chosen by the commissioners was the middle option, which was $7,000. However, once the bids came back, it came back at $8,400. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, John. Are there any questions at this time? Motion to approve the expenditure. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Number three, consider approval of a request to award bid for the purchase of grass seed and fertilizer to four vendors in a total amount of $70,686.65. Uh, commissioners, this was an item that we recently went out for to solicit bids for fertilizer and grass seed. 
Um, if you were watching the most recent uh, Shawnee County Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting, you'll see that uh, between Kerry Golden and uh, Advisory Board Member Dave Jackson, there was a lengthy discussion about weed seed cultivars and brown patch and all kinds of stuff that I really had no idea what they were talking about. So if you have any questions about any of those type of things, I did bring Kerry Golden along <laughs> with me today. He'd be glad to talk about any of those type of things. These are, uh, we're recommending the low bids except in the one instance when they did not meet the specifications. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, John. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve the request by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Number four, consider approval of request to pay an invoice from Capital Concrete Products, Inc for concrete pavers for the Garden Pagoda in an amount of $3,101.28. Uh, Commissioner, we're, we're asking for you to pay the, an invoice. Uh, before, uh, before the commission changed, we had a contract with um, uh, Architect One to uh, provide uh, the uh, construction of the uh, Lake Shawnee Pagoda. Uh, uh, parts of the, that project we wanted to self-perform. One of those functions was the uh, uh, the base, the uh, floor, uh, we laid the, the block in, we purchased the block, uh, and now that's come back, and we want to make sure that uh, uh, everything is clear. We, we did that, but we told, this was all in agreement before we signed the contract with them, uh, and uh, uh, we just, uh, the b bill's being held up until we dot all the I's and cross all the T's to make sure that uh, this bill is paid for the papers. Be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Thank you, John. Yeah. Other questions? There are not, but John, this is also, you want to talk a little bit about what's happening this afternoon? Yes. Um, regardless of whether or not you approve this or not today, we are having the grand opening of this Lake Shawnee Pagoda at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Everybody is invited to come out there. It turned out terrific. It's another um, rental facility, public use facility within the Ted Inslee Gardens out at Lake Shawnee. It has an oriental theme to it and it has a beautiful setting set right in there. I can see it being a very popular uh, place for weddings, family, family get-togethers, and all of those type of things. And that's this afternoon at the Ted Inslee Gardens. And it is a rental facility, so it, it will bring in revenue. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely. Okay. Question? I would motion to approve. There is a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Number five, consider approval of a sole source purchase from Allen Herschel Company for parts for the mini train at Gage Park in an amount of $7,254.77 and approval to pay invoices totaling that amount. Commissioner, this is a sole, sur sole source purchase request, the uh, only company that provides uh, uh, parts for our the, the mini, mini train at Gage Park is the Allen Herschel Company. Uh, and we had to keep that going. It's a very popular, very popular uh, attraction to Gage Park and uh, makes a significant uh, amount of revenue. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, John. I'll move approval of the request. Is there a second? Second. second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Number six, consider authorization and execution of contract C408 2013 with USD 321 for use of the Rossville Grade School necessary for the operation of youth basketball leagues in Rossville at no cost to the county. Commissioners, this is, uh, we have run youth basketball programs in the Rossville Grade School, and that's what this contract is, and there's no charge to the county to use that facility. Thanks, Sean. It's very very popular on Saturday mornings. You can barely get down that street. So, um, and and our thanks to uh, Principal McCullough and then their new uh, superintendent, Carrie uh, Laycock, um, for them not charging us. So. That sounds like a motion to me. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'll second it. That is a motion. <laughs> second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Number seven. Consider authorization and execution of contract C409-2013 with Stephanie Wilhelm, who provided renewal and certification for adults, for adult and pediatric CPR, first aid, and ADA compliance for employees that work at the Velma K. Paris Community Center in adaptive recreation at a total cost of $350, 
and approval to pay the invoice in that amount. Uh, Commissioners, I'd like to make one correction. That was an ADA. That, that should be AED, which is automatic external defibrillator. It's a typo and a mistake on our part. But uh, uh, many of our programs require that the staff working those uh, are first aid, CPR certified, and uh, the uh, cheapest price we could find was to uh, have this uh, Stephanie Wilhelm, who is a, uh, an administrator with our uh, uh, swimming programs up at Shawnee North, provide that training. Uh, the reason the contract is coming down here now is because we made all of those arrangements uh, but before it became uh, uh, mandatory that we have the service agreement come to you. Now that we've, we've put the service agreement together now, and that's before you this morning. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, John. Are there questions? Motion to approve the contract. Second. There is a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks, John. Item H, audit finance number one has been pulled. Number two, update on revenues and expenditures. Morning. Morning, Betty. Morning. Betty Greiner, financial administrator. If you will give the screen a minute to come up here. Oh. While it's coming up, I'll just read. Uh, this is the financial overview for July 30. Um, just want to remind you again that this is a snapshot view as of this date. Um, you know, this is throughout the year a moving target, but uh, this is as of this date the, uh, where we are right at that point in time. Okay, we will start with total revenues, and you will see year to date through the end of July uh, the actual revenues were 82 million 78,000 our budgeted was 83 million 387,000 and our actual for the prior year was 80 million 234,000 uh, I will break these revenues down into three categories and we will go through each of those categories but you can see uh, that our revenue is down from budget, but up from last year's. I've tried to kind of put these, as I've kind of been tweaking these month to month, I've tried to kind of put them in a logical sequence that we have our actual in our first column, our budget, which I think this is our most significant variance to look at, our actual to budget, mm -hmm. but then we can also compare it to last year's where we were at that point in time in last year. So our first uh, category that of the revenue, I'll break it down, is our tax revenue. And that you can see that um, year to date we've had revenue of 66600000 compared to our budget of 68557 And there again, we are ahead of last year's in revenue, but below what we had budgeted. Now, um, I've also, on the, the information that I've given you, I've also given a variance just for uh, the change in the variance between year-to-date at the end of June, year-to-date at the end of July, so we can kind of see what kind of activity we had in July. For taxes in July, there was no distribution for ad valorem tax or for motor vehicle tax or for the city county highway tax. So there's no variance in that. The only variance we have um, in tax revenue was in the local alcohol tax. And that we actually lost a little ground in there. We were um, $32,428 under where we were at the end of, of uh, July for our actual to budget. So our actual to budget for tax revenue, we are down 1956000 which is very, you know, uh, very close to what it was at the end of June. It's just, it's 32000 lower, the variance is. Okay, we will go on to my next category mm -hmm. under revenue is special assessments. This, uh, we've actually received $38,956 more than was budgeted, so we're a little higher than budget here. 
we are below last year, but that just means that some of those special assessments have paid off and are no longer coming due. Um, this, there was no dis tax distributions for special assessments either, so there's no variance change between June and July. And like I say, we are just a little bit above budget on that. My third revenue, revenue category is other revenue. So this is all of the non-tax revenue that the county receives. You can see that our actual in this category is actually 609000 above budget. So this helps offset those uh, deficiencies in the tax revenue. And uh, you can see it's, it's down from last year by 90000 but it's up from our budget of 609000 And if I look at that 609000 variance, and I, especially if I look at the differences between you know, where we were at the end of June, where we are at the end of July, our changes for July, we had $91,722 above budget for mortgage registration fees. We had, uh, we received the rest of the, the money for the City of Topeka merger, that was 100,000, that was, um, so we got that, those funds for the year. Mm -hmm. So we received all of those. And then we were, um, our revenue for this month was $127,700 over budget in all other categories, and, and that's um, the sheriff's department, the process fees, those were up 31000 over budget. The, the filing fees were up 17000 over budget. The uh, detention center, um, their fees were up 47000 over budget. So it's really kind of spread, you know, among all of those. Um, that was actually up 319000 over budget for the month of July, but it's, you know, spread between all of those categories. So that's kind of, that's the breakdown of revenue. So um, if we go on to our expenses, our year-to-date expenses are 53912000 compared to our budget of 55176000 um, As you can see we are actually under budget by one million two hundred and sixty four thousand for year to date now our expenses are up from last year seven hundred and sixty three thousand then I looked at the change in just for the month of July our change in the our variance from budget just for the month of July is um, we are five hundred and seventy thousand below our budget, our budgeted amount for July. Now, I want to caution you that 570000 is a lot of money. It sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But if you look at a percentage to our budget, we have a budget of almost $100 million. So that, that variance, that 570 that we are under budget for this month, is 0.57%. So it is about one half of one percent. So even though that's a lot of money, it's not a huge variance percentage. So if we look at our net, our net uh, revenues over expenditures for year to date, we are only we are forty three thousand eight hundred and twenty six dollars under budget. Um, and that is, and we are we are over last year's by a million eighty thousand. What our net was at this time last year, we are a little below budget, but you know at forty three thousand, I would say that that means we're pretty much right back on budget again. You know, last month right. we were down. Well, we have made almost all of that up. Um, 286,000 of it we made up in revenues, and 570,000 we made up in expenditures. So we are back to what we were pretty much throughout the year, of pretty much right back on budget. 
So at this point in time, I uh, still believe that our end of the year balance for the general fund will be as as I had predicted before would be the the estimate of four million six hundred and ninety eight thousand so, uh, I also have given you detailed information on the revenues and the expenditures what I've done on those is I've tried to <laughs> there again tweak it a little bit I've kind of used these same colors the blue red and the green on these same schedules so that these schedules tied to the graphs. So, any questions? Well, Betty, I'll just say, I mean, we've only been doing these updates every month for, what, two or three years, I think, Rich, um, when we first started doing this. Um, and you've taken it to a whole new level, I think, of, of being able to explain it not only to us, but I think to the public as well. And Good. so I, I think that has been very, very helpful, and I appreciate you doing that, but uh, because before that time we, we didn't have monthly updates on expenditures and revenues, and it's been I think it's been very helpful. So thank you, and I think the graphs for most of us are just you know yep. pictures worth a thousand words. <laughs> yeah, it thing. is. It is. Um, I just don't want us to get lost in the details and miss the big picture. Yep. So, thank you. Any other questions, Commissioner Turk? Um, yeah, I'd like to echo what uh, the chair has said. Uh, these these are just. Uh, very, very helpful. I assume we don't budget for clawback fees. That's correct. Okay. So what this is telling me is that we've really got a bonus of $551,000, um, and that is what's leading us to be in pretty good shape for the budget. Uh, if, if we consider that and we look at our total revenue, uh, you know, we our estimate was was way off. It was if you include that in the 1.3 million, you're looking at 1.8 million that uh, that our revenue estimate would would have been off. Uh, I don't know if we mm -hmm. uh, were just wildly optimistic well. or whatever, but I want th the point is I want us to make sure that we're conservative. And I think we have been in our estimates for revenue and, and expenses in, in coming periods. Well, and, and one of the things <coughs> that, uh, let me address that, in these budget amounts that have been shown, and, and it's, you know, trying to be consistent with the thing, way it's been shown in the past, uh, it has not accounted for delinquencies. Mm -hmm. It has shown mm -hmm. our budget as the levied amount. Um, and. What I would like to do, you know, through discussion and things like that, when we get to 2014, I would like to maybe work that into the, the delinquencies that we expect to work that into our budgeted revenue. Right now, it has not been. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at that, you know, for taxes, we are um, what is that, one million um, nine short. Now, that is mostly delinquencies, and that has not been worked into these budget numbers I'm showing you. Okay. Okay. And if I could inject on that, there's one significant bankruptcy that's driving this number, and it, it would be hard for staff to anticipate mm -hmm. something that big that affects the market so much. Mm -hmm. um, while it's been rumored that was going to happen for the last three or four years, when it finally did happen, we're seeing the effects of that now. What bankruptcy is that? That would be the Lindemuth and all of his associated companies. Oh, thank you. Let me mention Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Betty, as we also look at the revenue, I noticed that the Parks and Rec revenue is significantly less this year than it was last year, approximately 330, 329,000. Right. I, would that be in part due to it not being as hot this year, that people aren't going to be using the pool as much? and recreation is that where we see that tied well, in? John and I have talked about that and, and he if you would like to address it John you're welcome to you know there's a lot of factors I think that is one of them because last year was what uh, the, it was so hot that we had a lot of pool fees and if they're at the pool they probably also buy concessions and and those kind of things that we haven't had this year do you want to address it more 
Uh, Commissioners John and I, Parks and Recreation. I, I didn't, don't really need to. Betty was doing a great job. <laughs> uh, the last two years, uh, if you'll recall, we had no rain, 110 degrees every day throughout the summer, very good for, for swimming weather. This year we haven't. Um, the national golf average is down a little bit too. Um, we've had uh, significant days where we've had several days where it was raining that impacts events and some of those type of things. Uh, Betty and I have talked about maybe instead of one year estimates on revenues, kind of have more of a three to five year estimate to kind of take in some of these upswings and downswings that you'll see just because of the weather. That way you guys have a better idea of what you've got coming to you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. no. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Betty. Well done. Item I, Commission Number One, Public Hearing Regarding an Amendment to the Extension Council's Budget. Good morning, Commissioners. Jonathan Brazan, Assistant County Counselor. As stated in the memo uh, back on July 18th, the Commission approved the Extension Council's Budget in the amount of $615,013. And then at the August 15th meeting, there was some discussion about reducing that amount. The Extension Council uh, has a special statute that sets the procedure for their budget, and it says it has to basically be done in July. And then once it's set, that amount has to be moved over into the adopted county budget. So in order to amend that amount, there's a special procedure that's in KSA 79-29-29A that says we need to publish notice of a public hearing and have a public hearing in order to amend that amount, and that's what we're here for today. If you have to answer any questions. Thank you. At this time, we'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone wanting to make any comments? Lori? Uh, Lori Chandler, Shawnee County Extension Council. The only thing that I was going to add is I also need a signed budget reflecting the new amount. So I have that paperwork with me okay. and can give that to you now. If, if, would that be appropriate? Yeah, sure. Okay. Questions or a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. A second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. And as far as the amendment on the uh, count, the budget. Motion to approve the amendment to the budget. So motion to approve the amendment uh, on the extension council's budget. Second. There's a second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries two to one. Commissioner Bueller dissenting. Next item, please. Number two, consider acceptance of resi resignation from Richard C. Davis from the Metropolitan Topeka Airport Authority Board effective October 1st, 2013. Thank you. And with regret, we accept the resignation of Mr. Davis and he. Uh, he has some other plans in his future, so we do now have an opening on this board. And uh, commissioners, we have in the past opened it up for a couple of weeks and had those interested um, submit their names to the commissioners and uh, then take that under consideration. Uh, the only thing I don't know is usually there are some requirements, and I'm not sure. We'll get that information out. Uh, who serve on boards and if they're from a certain commission district, I think this is at large. So, yeah, I think this is at large. Um, but we'll get that to the press just to make sure. Um, I'll move to accept the resignation. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Number three, consider canceling the September 26th commission meeting. Motion to approve. Second. A motion to approve by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Administrative communications. Commissioner Tom Block of Public Works and Solid Waste. Um, with the Labor Day week coming up next week, I just wanted to announce what our solid waste uh, collection schedule will be for our customers. Of course, on Monday being the holiday, there will be no collection on Monday. On Tuesday, we will collect our Monday customers. So Monday's customers will be picked up on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we will collect 
our Tuesday and Wednesday customers. So there'll be a, a two-day collection, I guess, for on Wednesdays. Tuesdays and Wednesday customers will be picked up on Wednesday. So essentially no change for Wednesday customers and no changes for Thursday or Friday customers. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks. Good morning, Commissioner Grandy Luby, Parks and Recreation. I just want to inform you, um, I have organized a public meeting for the Abbott Community Center. It'll be uh, next Wednesday, I believe that's September 4th at 6 p.m. at the Abbott Community Center. I've invited a lot of the local uh, NIAs. Um, the reason we're doing this is to um, get there, the residents in that area, what they want out of the Abbott Community Center. Um, hopefully in the near future we will be going out for RFP um, for the operation of the Abbott Community Center. I've also invited some organizations that have contacted me with interest about running it so they can get that input too. Our thoughts are to be able to put a lot of this information into the RFP so uh, we get just what we want. So I just wanted to announce that and you're all welcome to attend. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Anyone else under administrative communications? Uh, a reminder that we do not have a meeting on Monday. And also a reminder that at 11 o'clock this morning, we'll have our department head meeting in these chambers from 11 to, to noon. Madam Chair, yes. if I could, just for administrative communication. Mm -hmm. um, with the Labor Day holiday approaching, I want to take a moment to reflect on the contributions of our employees mm -hmm. to this county. Dr. Martin Luther King said that all labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. I just wanted to let you, the county know how grateful I am to our employees, whether they're an RN in a clinic who helps to prevent a spread of disease to the public, corrections officer in the Shawnee County Jail who performs their job with professionalism in spite of difficulties, a clerk who double checks every account to make sure our bills are paid and our payroll is processed on time, a parks employee who mows and tends to the gardens of our many parks. Regardless of the job or the duty, the message is always the same in that our employees are the best asset and the most valuable asset that we have in Shawnee County. And as a Shawnee County Commissioner, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. And as we celebrate the Labor Day holiday, I think that sometimes a thank you and appreciation is sometimes it's left out for our employees. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for doing that. Anyone else? Next item, please. Executive sessions. And there is a need for an executive session to discuss non-elected personnel and consult on legal matters um, for a period not to exceed. We'll start with 10 minutes. Um, no action anticipated, but that is a, a, a motion. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye, opposed no, motion carries three to zero and thank you for reading the book today. There was a lot on there. You had a tough assignment. You passed the audition. <laughs> Thanks for
All right. We are back in session. No action required, and we are adjourned. All three of you need to sign this. This is the final budget. Yes. Uh -huh. Right on the, like, each of you.